It is Banned Books Week, and as Tracy Lair reports, some people can't wait to read them. When Banned Books Week began back in the 1980s, it celebrated the freedom to read. Now it seems like a cautionary tale. Typically, when books are challenged, it's those that are written for children or young adults and that people don't believe that are age appropriate. At the library, we encourage parents to get involved in the reading lives of their children and uh, help them select materials. Banned books are on display at Chaucer's Books and the Mary Jane McCord Planned Parenthood annual book sale. And people are checking them out and buying them too. Well, I think that every child needs to be seen and heard and honored. And I think by banning books, you take that away from a large group of kids and teens. There's a good chance you may have read some of the banned books, such as The Giving Tree. And To Kill a Mockingbird, and A Wrinkle in Time, and many, many more. Booksellers say censorship used to have more to do with sex, violence, and language. Now it has more to do with diversity and representation. Oh boys, they're going to get married and live together forever. The owner of Chaucer's didn't expect this chapter in American history. It's amazing the books that get banned that, that you know, like, why? It's just, it's crazy. The extra publicity appears to have helped their sales and sparked literary conversations. In Santa Barbara, I'm News Channel reporter Tracy Lair.